Today I'm going to be taking a look at a host managed SMR hard drive and seeing how it differs compared to the more traditional device managed SMR hard drive that has been creeping its way into a lot of consumer grade hard drives that have been manufactured recently. These device managed hard drives have caused a lot of controversy including things like the WD Red drive swap where they swapped more traditional CMR drives for SMR drives and caused things like over a 10x performance impact in some use cases like RAID rebuilds in ZFS. And then to understand why that happens, let's take a look at how SMR works. So SMR is short for Shingled Magnetic Recording and refers to the way that the data is laid on, on the hard drive disks. So let's first take a look at a traditional hard drive. So a traditional hard drive will essentially just write out each stripe on a separate piece of track like this. And all of these tracks will have their own little chunk of data. And if you want to read or write data, you can just read it from this piece, replace it with a different one, and then put it back on there. And this means you can randomly read and write data as you see fit to the hard drive sector. But with modern hard drives, the read heads can be smaller than the write heads. And what hard drives have started to do with SMR technology is essentially overlap themselves a little bit. So this way they're actually covering each other up. So that means those same four chunks of data, instead of being this wide, can now be this wide, using much less space on the physical hard drive platter. But since these are overlapped, you can't just rewrite one of these little inside sections. If you want to change this section, you have to go remove everything else and then start writing all the data over again. So if you want to modify something in the middle, that can cause a massive performance hit because you have to move a lot of data around on the hard drive to allow that to happen. And there's two ways for a hard drive to make that work. One is a device managed hard drive like this one here. And a device managed hard drive means that it presents to the operating system like any other hard drive. The, hard the operating system has no idea that this is an SMR hard drive and reads and writes data just like any other drive to it. And the device itself has a little controller built into it that handles converting the traditional hard drive commands that it's gotten to what an SMR drive needs on its platters to work correctly. The disadvantage is this can cause these massive performance hits, especially in random write workloads where you can see a 10, 20x, or sometimes even more performance hit because it has to do all this data shuffling around to make sure that's laid out in the dense way that an SMR drive needs it to be laid out in. Sometimes the performance impact isn't that big because there's a CMR buffer. So if you're just writing a few random files, it writes it to the buffer, and then when the hard drive is idle, it puts it correctly on the SMR tracks of the disk. But this only works for short workloads. When you're doing a sustained workload, the buffer is full, so it can't help at all. SMR hard drives have been a bit more popular in the enterprise space, and instead of trying to work like a traditional hard drive, they have to be given special commands that tells it how to use that SMR tracks on the data. And these are sometimes called zoned disk because they have different zones that have to be written sequentially to the data. So this drive I have here has a 256 megabytes zones. And in those zones, you have to write the whole 256 megabytes sequentially as it is essentially doing the overlapping shingled chunks of data like this in that zone. And you have to tell the hard drive to do it. If you give this hard drive normal hard drive commands, it's gonna error out and say it can't work. So if your file system or software is not designed for a host managed SMR drive, it's just gonna fail and won't work at all on this drive I have here. There is actually a third type of SMR hard drive, which I don't have here and actually have not been able to find any on the market. And this would be a host aware SMR drive. So it actually works kind of like both a host managed SMR hard drive and a device managed SMR hard drive, where it'll be able to switch between modes depending on if the host can issue those host managed SMR drive commands. If it can issue it, it'll work like a host managed drive. If it can't, it'll work like a more traditional device managed drive, allowing it to work to the fullest in both situations. Now that I've gone over how the SMR technology used inside these hard drives work, let's talk a little bit about compatibility and what it takes for the system to use it. So this is a standard SATA drive that this is, but even though it's a SATA drive, it won't work in most systems that can take a SATA drive because it needs those zoned commands to work correctly. So I tried this in many systems. For example, a lot of second and third gen Intel desktops, a USB to SATA adapter, my AM1 system, my AM4 desktop, and my SAS 2008 based HBA. And the only ones that worked was my AM1 desktop and my AM4 desktop. I'm guessing there's something about a slightly newer SATA revision or version that allows it to work on those newer systems, but prevents it to, from working on some of my older systems. 
I can't find anything that's definitive to know that if your system supports it or not, but it seems like if you have a new desktop, it'll work fine. If you have an older desktop, it probably won't work. And on most of my systems, it just did not show up as a disc at all. The only exception was my SAS 2008 based HBA, which would show the drive as appearing and show the correct capacity in LSB, OK, and Linux, but would not let me format it or use the disc at all. Now that I've gone over the compatible hardware of these sorts of drives, let's take a look at the software that is required for these drives to work correctly in an operating system. Luckily, Western Digital made a great website, zonestorage.io, that goes over a lot of the different requirements and how these drives can be used. The unfortunate part is compatibility really isn't great on Linux. And the other worst part is it really is Linux is your only option. Windows, Mac OS X, FreeBSD, and others don't seem to work at all with these host-managed SMR drives. So let's take a look at a few ways you can use this drive. The first way is DM zoned which essentially is a compatibility layer that makes a virtual disk that works like any other storage device that then converts it to be host managed SMR aware. The disadvantage of this is this is very slow. And in my testing was about four times slower than using a good file system on a host managed disk. I would not buy a host managed disk with the intention of using DM zoned as it's just slow and just doesn't seem to work well. The best way I found to use these drives was with a compatible file system. The two that I found that would work was F2FS and BTRFS. F2FS was originally built for flash storage as it is flash friendly file system, but also works quite well on these HMSMR drives. The disadvantage though, is that it seems to have a few issues. One of which is a 16 terabyte limit, which means I didn't have issues with my 14 terabyte drive I have here, but 18 terabyte or 22 terabyte or even larger future hard drives won't work with the current version of F2FS. BTRFS on the other hand just wouldn't format at all for me and it would throw some sort of weird error. I'm not sure exactly what it meant. It did recognize this as a zone storage disk, but ah, it's just annoying to run into issues. Zone storage on BTRFS seems to be a relatively recent feature, but the version that I had in Ubuntu 22.04 and Debian 11 should have been new enough to work fine, and it did recognize that it was a zone storage disk, it just wouldn't work at all and be able to format it. The next way that this storage could be used was with a compatible application, and they listed two databases as being compatible, which I did not personally have experience with those databases, so I couldn't confirm any more testing. Also, large companies seem to have kind of cloud programs and things like Ceph are likely compatible with these drives, but at a small level like I was working with, those programs just wouldn't make any sense for using a disk like this. Unfortunately, the limited compatibility of a host managed SMR drive kept me from doing a lot of the performance testing that I would have liked to be able to do. And also since almost all device managed SMR drives have some sort of cache or buffer built in, if I do something like crystal disk mark, it won't give me an accurate result because then I'm just essentially testing the CMR cache on this drive and not the actual SMR bits. So the main thing I did was large file copies. That seems to be something that a drive like this is built for. And with a large file copy on a device managed SMR drive, they slow down very significantly after filling that buffer up, going from maybe something like 100 to 200 and some megabytes per second down to maybe 20 or 40 megabytes per second. But I couldn't reproduce that on my host managed SMR drive, likely due to the ability of the file system being able to much better handle the SMR zones on this drive than the internal drive controller could do on a device managed SMR drive. So if everything was compatible, these host managed SMR drives seem like they'd make a lot of sense as kind of a file dump where the speeds aren't the most important, but you wanna be able to get cheaper storage. Something like a backup drive would make a lot of sense on host managed SMR it seems like, but due to the very poor compatibility of programs like Veeam and other large backup software, I don't see it being practical for almost all uses. And I've tried using standard SMR dr drives for something like Veeam backups. And while they're fine for incremental backups, full backups can get incredibly slow because it just takes forever to dump the data. So should you buy a hard drive like this? I don't think so. Even though I got this drive for about $100 used on eBay and it works perfectly fine as a 14 terabyte drive in Linux, I just can't think of many ways I'd use this because I can't use it in a RAID array. I couldn't use it as like a games drive in Windows. I can really only use it as a mass storage drive in Linux and as a single disk. And I can't use it in my servers because they're not compatible with host managed SMR drives. 
so I really don't have much I can use it for, and I'd probably rather get a smaller drive that I can use in anything than a larger drive that only a very small subset of my systems and software will work with. I also am in the opinion that the hard drive manufacturers handled the rollout of SMR hard drives extremely poorly. I think these device managed SMR drives should have never existed on the market, and that host managed SMR drives should have been made the norm for consumer grade drives and be branded as a separate model of drives. So then things like the WD Red issues, where they were taking device managed drives and kind of branding them and putting them in a market where customers were not expecting it and seeing massive performance hits would have never existed. I think educating customers on the differences of SMR drives and working with Microsoft and other software vendors to make it so that SMR drives works out of the box in every modern piece of hardware and software would have been a much better solution. And then SMR could have kind of been branded as a slightly different tier of hard drive storage technology with slightly less performance and worse compatibility, but also would work nearly as well in a lot of use cases. And if they also worked with NAS vendors and backup software, I could see these drives as being extremely good for large backups. But now with the current device managed SMR drives that have gotten out there, it looks like the hard drive manufacturers are just kind of trying to screw you over by giving you a cheaper product and not telling you about it. And if you've gotten websites like these from Seagate where they kind of label it reasonably well, but not really, and it's extremely ugly trying to find out if a drive is SMR or not. And I think the hard drive companies have done very poor marketing and probably should be fined for it because they don't list SMR as a major feature of the drive. When you look at a hard drive, they say things like three and a half inch, 5,400 RPM or something like that, but they don't list if it's SMR on the product page. And I think a feature that has such large performance impacts should not be put into a product line without publicly showing it on the front pages of product descriptions. And if hard drive manufacturers would have worked with others so that host managed SMR drives would work well, this would have also actually helped the SSD market too, because SSDs are similar to SMR drives, where that they have chunks of data or zones that are larger than a typical sector size that want to be written to sequentially. In the case of SSDs, there's an erase block that is typically like 32 megabytes or something like that, which is much larger than the standard four kilobyte sector that is on these drives that you want to write to sequentially because you have to erase the whole block at once. And since NAND flash on these drives is so much faster than hard drives, the penalty of the erase block being larger isn't that big normally. But if you wrote the software around having zone storage, you wouldn't have to have that penalty. And also you could make SSDs a lot simpler because you could get rid of most of the DRAM and the very high performance controllers that a lot of SSDs have. So then SSDs could be cheaper with a similar amount of performance using a very similar technology that would be used for host managed SMR drives. So I really wish that storage would have been done a little bit differently in the past and I think we would have had a better storage situation if the hard drive companies would have done that instead of just trying to give us these device managed SMR drives to save them a buck and make the hard drive companies look like they're trying to screw over their customers in the same way. Thanks for watching this video going over host managed SMR drives. Let me know if you have any questions or any ways that you'd like to see me test this drive in the future and subscribe for more storage and computer videos in the future.